All right. After Wednesday's chaos at the Capitol, President-elect Joe Biden and Kamala Harris came forward with speeches saying that those rioters were treated differently because of their race. Keep in mind, one person was shot and killed and it got pretty messy. We have a lot of video of that. Uh, a panel is joining us now to talk about this. Isabel Brown uh, from Turning Point USA, a spokesperson and conservative Gen Z activist and commentator uh, and conservative analyst Rogan O'Hanley. Guys, thanks for coming on. You know, Rogan, it, it, was, it shocked me a little bit when immediately the day after, when there's so much ammunition for the Democrats, they somehow turned it into race and, and the difference between how white people are treated in a protest. What did you make of that? Well, it's their favorite trick to pull. They love to boil everything down to race, even when race has nothing to do with it. I could name at least a dozen black Trump supporters that were there by, you know, personally, never mind the thousands that were there. There were families there, people from all over the country, all over the world. And again, 99.9 percent of the protesters there were peaceful. I think there was over a million, according to some counts, were peaceful. And then you had this, you know, group of people that took it a step way too far. So, yeah. uh, you know, it, shameful on the left for trying to equate this to race, especially when we saw these BLM riots go on for months where literally dozens of people were killed in connection with them, including David Dorn, yeah. a retired police officer. So uh, if anything, I would say the BLM riots were actually treated with kid gloves as opposed to the crackdown we're seeing on this situation. I absolutely couldn't agree more. I mean, I, I, you, you wondered for so long, where are the police as they just got uh, carte blanche, do anything they want. Isabel, I want to play for you uh, uh, the president-elect Joe Biden. Let's take a listen. No one can tell me that if had been a group of Black Lives Matter protesting yesterday, there wouldn't have been, they wouldn't have been treated very, very differently than the mob of thugs that stormed the Capitol. So we just talked about how nonsensical and how they're just living on another planet saying that. But what about just the idea of that comment of stirring things up the day after we just had this mess on Capitol Hill? It's completely unnecessary, and it speaks exactly to the playbook of the left that despite the fact that they say they want true unity, in reality, they're interested in dividing Americans into as many individual factions as possible. You know, I find it interesting, this continued allegation from the left that institutional racism is somehow driving every aspect of the culture in our country when it's in fact the left that controls or dominates nearly every sphere of influence in the United States. When you look at academia, Hollywood, social media, large corporations, digital media that we understand the news from, we could make that list go on and on and on. So if institutional racism really is the problem here, it's probably the left driving that force. Absolutely. Okay. Uh, Isabel and Rogan, uh, thank you guys so much for joining us. Good to talk with you.